Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to read the periodic table and some of the names that you absolutely should know for dealing with elements on the periodic table. So first, let's talk about the groups. There are eight groups based on the eight columns of the periodic table. I think it's safe to say that it looks like there's a lot more than eight columns, but that's because we ignore the transition metals. That's its own category. So first, in the top left, we have group one, and we call these the alkali metals. And I don't know why they're called the alkali metals, but that's what they're called. One thing that all of these have in common is that in their ion form, when they gain or lose electrons, they are all going to become positive for their charge. One positive, to be exact. Next, we have group two. And group two is going to be known as the alkaline earth metals. I don't know why it's alkaline versus alkali. I, I don't know. But one thing I do know is that all of these elements, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, all of them, when they form an ion, they're going to be two plus. So I think it's safe to say, so far, everything has made sense. But now with this middle section, with the transition metals, this is where things start to break down. This does not have a group name. We just call them the transition metals. And unlike group one or group two, these guys can have a bunch of different ion forms. For instance, they can be one plus, two plus, three plus, four plus. There's a lot of variation. It's very annoying. So most of the time in the problem, they'll have to tell you what the charge is. Now we're going to move on to the boron group. This is group three for the boron group. It doesn't have a name like the other two, so I'm just going to call it the boron group or boron family. And basically all of the elements in here, well, I don't know about all of them, but definitely boron and aluminum, when they form their ion forms, they are going to be three plus because they have three valence electrons, which is a topic for another day. To the right of that, we have carbon. We'll call it group four or the carbon family. These guys are interesting because since they have four valence electrons, which again, I'm not explaining today, but basically what it means is that they can either be plus four or minus four. Their valence electrons can go both ways. So there's no standard that you're gonna see for ionic compounds. And then I'm basically out of room for writing, but I'm just gonna tell you that Group five is the nitrogen family. All of the nitrogen family will be three minus when they form their ions. Group six is the oxygen family. All of them will be two minus for their ion forms. Group seven, the fluorine family, does have a special name. These guys are called the halogens for some reason. That's the fluorine family, group seven. And all of them just are minus, one minus, for their ion form. And you're going to see a lot of those in ionic compounds. And that's because they have a very high electronegativity value, which means nothing to you. But I'll tell you, it means they love forming ions. And then finally, the last category, group eight, we have the noble gases. And the noble gases are so special because these elements basically never form compounds. And that's because their electron shell is already full. So these guys, I'm just going to say no charge. It's very rare that any of the noble gases would ever form a compound with anything. Most of them exist in their natural state. In other words, we all know what helium is in balloons. We all know what neon is in neon signs. They exist as their own element in nature for most of these. And that's basically it. I mean, the section at the bottom here, the lanthanides and actinides, I'm talking about these elements at the very bottom here. These really don't matter, and we'll talk about them later in the semester. But for now, I can just say you can ignore them. And if I were you, what's the most important thing to memorize? I would say first, the names of these, like alkali metals, halogens, noble gases, etc. And also know the ions, one plus for this entire column, two plus for this entire column. Have these memorized because it's going to help you a lot when we start doing ionic compounds. And yeah, that's basically it. So thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care 
and bye-bye.